Greetings everyone and welcome back to the bench. We're going to continue on with the discrete audio amplifier design and build project. If you've been following this series, you probably remember in the last video I was experimenting with the biasing and thermal stability of the output stage. And I did have some issues. For one thing, the bias wasn't very steady as I just turned on the power and let it warm up on its own. It was over overshooting my design current limits and then it came back down. At least it wasn't thermally running away. Well that's good. However, it really needs to stay within the 25 to 50 milliamp bias current in the output stage. And that has to do that so I can meet my distortion figures that I want the amplifier to hit if I'm going to release this as a kit. And I also made a pretty egregious error in that video. And somebody pointed that out in the comment section. What I was doing, if you remember, I was heating this heat sink externally. What was happening is the bias current was falling below my designed levels. And, you know, it, that's not going to allow me to reach my distortion figures if that was to occur. So what was happening is the servo transistor is not monitoring the drivers and because those are not warming up it overcompensates and brings the current far too low. Now it probably would not be audible but if I want the amplifier to meet its design distortion figures uh, it has to stay within its range. Before I move ahead I want to recap some things and also mention some changes I've made since the last video. One of the changes I made is to get rid of the sill pads and replace them with mica because when I first fired up the amplifier under a no signal condition I mean it was just conducting bias current I felt these transistors getting a little bit warm and the heat sink is still cold the servo was still cold and I think that was causing some tracking error with the bias current so I put the micas on there and we'll check that out and one thing people ask me is the amplifier going to use TO220 transistors and uh, I mentioned it before but I'll say it again is no I'm going to use these TO264 transistors you see I have a much larger thermal pad on the back than the little TO220s it just happens that the die inside of this and these are the same they're both 5200 and 1943 transistors. You know, this is a 2SC 5200, 2SA 1943. Um, this is a 5200, 1943. So it's the same exact die in these transistors. It's just that these are derated for maximum power dissipation because of the smaller package size. And I use them because I can plug them into the socket board to experiment. I think I'm all right using the socket board because I'm only handling bias currents here. I'm not uh, using it to conduct heavy current. You know, I'm not testing with an output signal or anything like that. Just, like I say, bias currents only. Now, you could use sill pads on these larger transistors because they have such a larger thermal area. However, I would still recommend mica because this amplifier is going to be able to deliver around 100 watts into a 4 ohm load. Even with the larger transistors, I think you want to get as much heat out of them as you can and use a large enough heat sink. But again, I think you'd want to use the mica pads because they'll get heat from these transistors better into a larger heat sink. Again, the heat sink is very small in this experimenting jig because I want it to heat up and cool down quicker. It'd take a lot longer if I had a full-size heat sink in use. But what I've done here, I, I did change this to 1K. It was 2.2K before. Another thing I added is this limiting resistor here, which limits the range of the potentiometer or the trimmer. So if somebody gets in here and twiddles this, they might accidentally set the current too high and send the output transistors beyond their safe operating area and they could be destroyed. Now another thing I'd like to mention is that if you look in common amplifiers you rarely see the drivers mounted on the heat sink. They're either on the circuit board with no heat sink 
or they'll have a small heat sink, depending on how much power they need to dissipate. But it is important to understand that even under bias current conditions, these driver transistors will warm up somewhat. The reason being is because of the speed up resistor. You have the base emitter voltage drop here, um, base emitter voltage drop here. So you have about 1.1 volts. You know, neglecting the voltage drop across the 0.22 ohm emitter resistors because it's very low. So you have about 5 milliamps that flow through this emitter resistor. And uh, in this case, there's about 500 microamps flowing into the base of the output transistors to turn those on. I guess flowing in here and coming out here using conventional current flow. But anyway, with 5.5 milliamps flowing through these driver transistors, they're going to dissipate about 175 milliwatts. And that's not a lot, but you know that's will be enough to warm them up a little bit, even under quiescent or idle conditions. Okay, so I have the power supply set up for 64 volts, which is as high as it'll go. In the amplifier circuit, the actual finished design, it'll be around 70 volts, but this is okay for experimentation. If you remember in the last video when I did this test, it started out climbed up high, overshot the maximum designed current, then it came back within spec. So I'm hoping now it stays within spec. It's still going to change. As long as it's within spec, we're okay. So I'll turn on the power supply. And it's a little under now, which is fine, because it's starting out cold. But, it, you know, in a couple seconds, it hit 5.5 millivolts, which means we're in spec. And we'll let it climb. Hopefully it doesn't go over 11. Okay, so I, I stopped recording because it takes a while. You know, it takes a few minutes and, and to save the battery and memory card space and all that good stuff. But what happened is it climbed up to 10. That's fine because it's well within the limits. And it dropped out back to around 8. 0.8 or so. 10 divided by 0.22, that's 45 milliamps, so that's fine. And uh, we'll say 8.8 .8 divided by 0.22, that's 40 milliamps, that's fine as well. I could drop it a little bit. So to me, this is working pretty good at idle currents. You know, that's no signal or anything. So next, I want to get this thing warmed up. Now, I don't want to do the same error that I did before where I added heat externally. I want to make the circuit heat up by increasing its current and then turning that current off and see, because that will allow the driver transistors to do some work and get them warmed up. And we'll see how those um, sitting here in the air open air here see how that affects the current and in the next test I'll actually put these onto the heat sink okay so what I've done now is connect a 9 volt battery in series with a 1k resistor and a switch across our bias spreader so when I close the switch it's going to increase the voltage drop across the bias spreader and force these drivers to turn on more and of course increase the bias current in the output stage. So here's the little 9 volt battery pack, 1k resistor over there somewhere. And let's see here, it's been running for quite a while. I'll turn the battery pack on. And you can see the current jumped up significantly. Uh, what is that about? Uh, we'll say 44 divided by 0.22. That's 200 milliamps. That should get this heat sink nice and toasty. So I let this run for a while, and we'll see how it affects 
the temperature and bias stability when I turn it back off. In fact, let's see what happens if I turn it off now. Yeah, it pretty much drops back. Drop back more. Yeah, it still might be overcompensating somewhat. But let's see. It's still good, though. It's still in range. But let's run it for a while and see what happens. Okay, it's been running for a while. That heat sink is now to the point I almost can't hold on to it. The current has dropped somewhat. So I'll turn it off. Oh, the meter is going to turn off. And, yeah, it did overcompensate. It dropped below 5.5, so it's too low now. So the circuit is still overcompensating, probably because of these uh, drivers still don't get as hot as the heat sink. Okay, so the next test is to move these drivers over to the sides here. I have just enough room on the board, and I'll put them on the heat sink so they will be the same temperature as the outputs, and we'll see how it tracks then. And if it tracks good, then I know I really probably should put these drivers on the output. Okay, now I've mounted the drivers to the heat sink. So I moved them over here, had to do some rewiring on the socket board. I don't feel like drilling any new holes and tapping and all that, so I just used these clamps. Let me get this in the shot here. And I will turn on the power supply. And because everything's on the, the heat sink and be running at the same temperature, I mean, there is a little bit of a time factor before the heat spreads throughout the heat sink, but uh, it should be much better. Okay, turn it on. It's already in range, but still, I'd give it a couple seconds. And as everything warms up, it should stabilize at a certain level here. Okay, I'm going to let it run and stabilize. It'll probably take a couple minutes, and I'll come right back. Okay, it's been running for a while now, several minutes. It seemed to have stabilized around 8.6, 8.7. It did not go over 9, so that's really good. It's really tracking pretty tight now. So now I'll turn on the so-called heater circuit, which just cranks up the bias current. And it jumps up to 42. Of course, there'll be some time delay as heat gets out of the transistors through the heat sink into this uh, bias transistor here. So what I'll do, well, for now, let's turn it off and see what happens. should quickly drop back down to what it was. Yep, <laughs> pretty much did. Okay, I'll turn it on now and let it go and get this heat sink really hot. And see how it deals with that. That'll take a while, so I'll stop recording and come back. Okay, we've been running for a few minutes now. This heat sink is almost too hot for me to touch. Notice with the extra current turned on, this hasn't changed much. So the stability seems to track very well. So I'll turn that off and we'll let it drop back. And it's dropping back. Seems to be leveling out now. Still not too bad. I mean, what is it, 0.7 or so millivolts higher? Tell me it's pretty darn accurate. So this is not really a surprise, having the transistors in the same thermal situation being on the same heat sink. But tracking is really excellent. I mean, without a sophisticated tracking circuit, I mean, it's staying pretty close to what it was. So yeah, this is what it's all about. I think I'm going to uh, consider putting the, uh, well, I am going to put the drivers on the heat sink in the final amp design. So this does 
alleviate this issue with thermal tracking. Yep, having them on the heat sink, that's the way to go. I mean, you could put them on smaller heat sinks that, you know, hopefully they would retain about the same amount of temperature, but and you can't really rely on that. Though, I don't think it's a big deal. They do it all the time in consumer units. Another issue I was concerned about is how hot the drivers would get. You know, this amplifier, with a good enough transformer, it probably put 110, maybe even 120 watts into a 4-ohm load. And if it's a difficult load, yeah, I think we're over the limit there on those driver transistors just standing in free air. And if I had to go find little heat sinks for them, you know, I have to make sure I put cutouts in the board so they could be screwed down and all that stuff. And, you know, it's another thing on the bill of materials. So just putting them right on the heat sink, that will alleviate all of that issue. And, you know, the tracking's going to be better. Don't have to worry about the thermals of the drivers. Well, that fills in a few blanks on the circuit here. Just a few more things to work on before I... You know, actually breadboard the entire circuit. Well, for one thing, I need to uh, change this layout to get the uh, drivers onto the heat sink. Maybe make this board a little more compact doing that. I don't know. Then I have to look at phase compensation and stability being a feedback amplifier and everything. We have to get that done, but I think that won't be that difficult because I could use the oscilloscope and you check the phase from the input to the output. You know, that would determine the value of this capacitor here. Might have to add in what's known as base stopper resistors if the amplifier doesn't behave as far as stability goes. So yes, I'm glad to get over the thermal stability hurdle here of the amp design so I can move ahead with this circuit. That'll do it for this one. Thanks for watching. We have a squeaky kitty. <laughs> yes, we do, a squeaky kitty. Look at this. Fell asleep on the bench. My trusty assistant. You just can't count on him. He just falls asleep on the bench.